Well, good morning. Today we are talking about the best settings for your DSLR for when you're shooting video and we're playing in the snow. All right, so we just got to the park. We are at Quail Ridge Park. You can kind of see around it is snowing and beautiful. Um, what we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be filming some nature footage for an upcoming Christmas project. And I figured while I was filming, I would talk to you a little bit about some of the camera settings that I use to get the most cinematic, the most smooth, the most beautiful footage out of a DSLR camera. I'm also going to be shooting on my C200, but uh, I'm not going to get into that today. So let's go have fun. Oh, we're still here, flipping coins about what's to come. I found a nice little place that we can talk a little bit. The first setting that I do when I'm setting up my DSLR is I adjust my white balance. White balance um, is basically just the way that the camera interprets what white is. So if you're outside, your white balance is going to be warmer. It's going to be more yellow. If you're inside with tungsten lights, it's going to be more blue. So depending on where you're at, you need to adjust your white balance. You can always put your white balance on auto which I use when I'm going inside and outside a lot, then I don't have to worry about it as much. But if I really want to dial in my settings, I need to make sure that my white balance is appropriate. And the way that I usually judge it is by skin tones. Depending on what your skin looks like, that will tell you if you're either blue or yellow. And then you need to adjust accordingly. If you don't really know, keep it on auto or use the settings in your camera that tell you what options you have. So click on the little sunny, click on the little cloudy, click on the little shady, tungsten light bulb, all of those things. Okay, after you have your white balance adjusted, you need to adjust your frames per second. Frames per second is exactly what it says. 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 30, 120, all those things. Typically I shoot in 24 frames per second if I'm talking to the camera. Otherwise I'm shooting in 60 frames per second because then I can slow down my footage over a 24 frame second timeline. So those 60 seconds become basically two and a half seconds worth of footage. A lot of people like 120 frames per second, but there is some disadvantages. Most cameras don't record audio with 120 frames per second, and you need more light, which is usually a battle for me. So I usually love 60 frames per second, or if someone's talking, I shoot in 24 frames per second. All right, so say you wanna shoot a talking head just like this. You adjust your white balance so that the skin tones look natural, not too yellow, not too blue. Next, you adjust your frames per second, which is 24 frames per second because someone's talking. The next thing you need to do is start adjusting your camera for exposure. The first thing you do is adjust your shutter speed. It's easy with video because shutter speed is dependent on what frames per second you're shooting. So no matter what you're shooting, you always want to double your frame rate. So that means if your frame rate is 24 frames per second, you want to shoot at 1 50th. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you need to shoot at 1 1 25th. If you're shooting at 120 frames per second, that means you're shooting at 1 2 40th. And when you're shooting at 1 2 40th, you're sucking up a lot of that light because the higher the shutter, the less light it lets in. All right, the next thing you need to adjust is your aperture. Depending on what you want, if you want the blurry background in the back, you want to have as low as aperture as possible. So that means if you're shooting on a like an f2.8, you keep it at f2.8. So we've got our shutter speed at 1 50th. We have our aperture at as low as possible so we get that blurred out background. And then our ISO is just what we use to build our exposure then. So if you need more light, you bump up your ISO, say 200, 300, 400, 1000, whatever you need. If you need less light, you have two options. You have to either put a variable ND filter on your lens itself or you have to bump up your aperture and lose some of that blurry background. Those are your only options. All right, back at the Jeep, re-gearing, getting some different things. 
let's talk about slow-mo so if you're shooting some slow-mo at sunset it's about 7 30 or whatever and uh, the sun is going down so the light is really yellow so that means you need to bump up your um, white balance to closer to 7,000 then uh, you're doing slow-mo so now we need to put our shutter speed at 1 1 25th make sure that you're set on 60 frames per second then try and keep that aperture as low as possible. Find a low level, um, a low aperture lens like a uh, 50 millimeter f1.8 so that you can get that really shallow depth of field. That will give you some really good looking footage. Then keep that ISO at 100. So if you don't have an ND filter, you need to pick one up. It's, it's so important with DSLR footage to be able to keep that aperture low so that everything's not in focus. All right, so once you have all your settings dialed in, how do you know if you're properly exposed? Well, there's a little meter on the bottom of your DSLR screen if you hit your autofocus button. It pops up the meter and lets you know if you're underexposed or autoexposed. And you can kind of play with it and bend the rules, but you want to try and get that thing pretty much on the zero as much as you can. Once you learn what your camera can handle, whether overexposing or underexposing, then you can play around with underexposed footage like silhouettes or overexposed like blown out beautiful wedding videos. All right guys, hopefully this footage isn't all way overexposed because I'm just kind of running gun in here. If you have any questions about exposure and how to set up your camera for video, talk to me. Leave me a comment. I would love to chat with you one on one if you're having a trouble with your camera. DSLRs are super powerful for video and I just encourage you to get out and film as much as you can. Thanks guys, hope you have a great day.